Well, ladies and gentlemen, we were caught tampering. Or at least that's what they want us to believe on social media and or want the story to be. And they've created it themselves. So <clears throat> they're going to have fun with it. So are we. So I did some digging for y'all to give you some ammunition out there on the front lines and social media dealing with this nonsense. And we're going to get into that a little bit here. And uh, we're going to break it down, you know, piece by piece. We're going to go into the comments that were made by both Dominic and Kirk. And we're going to, I drew some lines here. I did some research and drew some, drew some lines to kind of make sense of everything and, and connect the dots. So uh, first things first, my name is Justin Adams. I'm a content creator here at Nebraska football at the Voice of College Football. If you like we're doing here, please consider liking and subscribing, but I'm going to shut up and we can get to the content now. So <clears throat> Kirk Herbstreet and Raiola had a conversation. Okay. And I'm going to first pull up the tweet that got everything going for context here. and. You know, we're going to we're going to see if we can dive into this a little bit. So <clears throat> rivals, you know, they they really just a uh, uh, harmless post here. 30 second clip from the interview they did full interviews on uh, YouTube, I believe. So and basically everybody took this 30 second clip and ran with it. Kirk Herbstreit called Dylan Rayola's dad about flipping to Nebraska. OK, so, it, you know, it is very uh, clickbaity awarded. So, yeah, we are going to keep that in mind. They had a little bit to do with this, but this you know, absolute uh, ridiculous page here that is probably one of the worst on Twitter um, had this little post that will pull up here and I'll zoom out a little bit first. <clears throat> and you can see down at the bottom, it said tampering and they go into this little thing here. First things first, Kirk talked to Dominic, not Dylan. Okay. So I'll bring up one guy's name, Kirk Herbstreit. He saw the smoke about Dylan Entertainer Nebraska. He was like, call me. Like, dude, if this is true, he's got to do it. And then following this phone call, Dylan Raiola flipped his commitment to Georgia, Nebraska. So they imply that, yeah, following this phone call just right after they hung up, Dylan flipped his commitment. It's lazy. It's really lazy reporting. This page is terrible. I hope they watch this one day. Um, he said, dude, if this is true, he's got to do it. So that was, that was what was said. That's what made this grow legs. Okay. They continue down here. Oh, uh, we don't believe it's this blah, 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 unethical. It's so unethical that ESPN analysts are supposed to remain unbiased is actually pushing a top recruit to a certain school. I don't know what biases he would have necessarily towards Nebraska considering he's an Ohio State alum, but <clears throat> I digress. Um, yeah, so let's just go ahead and dive a little bit into uh, this and then, you know, their little, their little uh, recovery tweet about them posting... Um, tampering the Google definition of tampering to their, uh, to their page to uh, try to justify this mess. Okay. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get the first thing out of the way. What is tampering? Well, there's one place to find that and that is the NCAA rule book. And that seems to be what everybody is uh, neglecting to pull up here. So let's just go ahead and look at it here. If you look up, you know, the bylaws in regards to tampering, it's transfers only. It's talking about one-time transfer exemptions. And here's the bylaw right here. Impermissible contact versus tampering. <clears throat> any, uh, any communication with an enrolled student athlete is impermissible. Enrolled student athlete, although communication is impermissible, not every instant rises to the level of tampering. Even if that's the case, you know, there's levels to this. There's tier one, tier two. Every case is fact-specific. So let's get into that. <clears throat> and here it is again. An athletic staff member or other representative of an institution's athletics interest shall not make contact with student athlete of another NCAA Division I institution directly or indirectly without first obtaining authorization through the notification of the transfer process before making contact directly or indirectly, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Kirk Herbstreit is not a part of any Division I organization. He's an analyst and he's a college football fan. At the end of the day, everybody knows Kirk Herbstreit loves college football. Kirk Herbstreit also, like Joel Klatt, is very much a proponent of these blue bloods. They want them to be better, right? He mentioned him and Dominic are friends, or or he said he's like we're not we're not close friends, but we we talk, you know. And and he talked about his respect for Dominic, and and in the conversation, Kirk Herbstreit was like, I didn't tell him to go there. I didn't blew that he should leave Georgia. And we'll get into what he said. Because that's going to be important to this article I'm about to pull up in a second. So <clears throat> let's get into here. Um, we know how everything went down. Again, Dylan told Dayton that he wanted to come to Nebraska. That's how it all started. 
told his brother Dayton Raiola he wanted to come to Nebraska. Dayton told Dominic. Dominic confirmed with Dylan because Dominic was not trying to sway him that direction, obviously. And did it, he, and you know, yeah, I respect that. <clears throat> he also mentioned he has other had other coaches reach out. So in that same interview at the very tail end of it, and he's like, and I've had other coaches also reach out telling me how much they respect Matt Rule, how much they like Matt Rule, which is what Kirk Herbstreet said he said. So that little tidbit right there, why didn't anybody take that and run with it? Why did anybody take that other coaches were reaching out and and that's closer to tampering than anything? Well, it's because <clears throat> Kirk Herbstreet is a big name. Kirk Herbstreet takes a lot of crap and Nebraska's big name. Riola's a big name. They're just going to get people to jump on this. Okay, Georgia fans have done that and I don't understand it, but again, I digress. <clears throat> he also mentioned the other coaches reach out, talking to Rule, how special of a leader he is, and that it is is it the case? You know why why wouldn't they care about the coaches saying that? Okay, so let's let's pull up. Um, I'm going to pull up a first. Well, let me go through Kirk's uh, words first. So Kirk says, when somebody calls and asks about Rule, what was he supposed to say? Was he supposed to say, you know, I don't like him, or was he supposed to be honest? And he told him the truth. He respects Matt Rule. He likes what he's doing. He likes what he stands for. <clears throat> and, you know, he said that Dom mentioned family legacy and, and you know, Kirk Herbs of Kirk Herbstreit knows of Dom's career there naturally. Um, and, you know, Kirk Herbstreit in his interview mentioned that he really liked that, you know, it was similar to his dad. His dad, because Kirk went to Ohio State because of his dad. Okay. And so there's that parallel there. And he recognized out of respect uh, for his family and love for the program that Dylan, you know, respectfully decided that he wanted to go to Nebraska because of his love and affinity for the program. And here's where the key point comes in. Kirk Herbstreet, just a little snippet, a couple seconds, he said he's thinking more about that than thinking just NFL. And that shows his love for the program and the family. Then the part about then thinking just NFL. Okay, well, I did some digging. Let's go see what Kirk Herbstreet's thoughts are on, you know, these players going to the NFL. It's going to be from a website. I don't know y'all if y'all are fans of Fox News or not, but let's just let's just dive into this a little bit. So I'm going to zoom in here for y'all. And essentially, they did an interview with Kirk Herbstreet back in 2021, I believe. And... um Says, what do you think of Quinn or your skipping out of senior year of high school? That's garbage. Quinn Case, Texas, blah, 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 blah. I think it's about more, more having some huge opportunities. I'm guessing these states are going to have to catch up on the new rules and laws that are out there. I've never seen a generation of kids in such a rush to get to the NFL. And what's funny is every NFL player you talk to, they're all dreaming of just going back one more game to play for their college. And these college kids are trying to sprint into three years to get to the NFL. They're missing out on so much as far as what the college game has to offer for them. Okay, why is that important? Well, again, in his interview, he specific Kirk specifically mentioned word for word that he respected the fact that Dylan wasn't going after, he could have went after any high-level program, and that could have been his fast track to the NFL. And what Kirk liked about what Dylan did is he knows that that's the case, but yet he respects his dad so much that he decided to go to Nebraska. Where is the parallel with Kirk? Okay, Kirk's, again, Kirk Herbstreit went to Ohio State because of his dad. He also mentioned that in the interview. Lastly, you know, Kirk Herbstreit's son, I don't know if and many of y'all know this, but Kirk Herbstreit, when his sons were committing to Clemson, you know, first off, if he didn't even try to convince his own sons originally to go to Ohio State, why would he convince Dominic, you know, to try to get Dylan over there? Secondly, Kirk Herbstreit trusts his, uh, Clemson to do what's right for his sons. And then down here, he said he trusts, he trusts Dabo, in quotes, in this case, Dabo Sweeney. I'm one of the guys who trust, in this case, Dabo Sweeney and staff. And why is that that what is the difference there and what he said to Matt Rule versus and then this is an article published and everything there's literally no difference and if he didn't convince his own kids to go to Ohio State why would he do that now one of his kids has since transferred to Ohio State which is even more of a reason why wasn't that pointed out as tampering 
I would imagine that he had something to do with his son going to Ohio State. So basically, to wrap a bow on all this situation, this is not tampering. There's no reason to entertain this nonsense. And if you do, just throw out some of this stuff and just nip it on the butt because they are not going to be able to answer these questions. And again, this is much ado about nothing. People trying to get clicks, clickbaity stuff. And I just wanted to address it because I'm tired of seeing the back and forth on social media and you know, Husker fans entertaining it too. I get it. Um, but I just want to give you all a little bit of ammunition to go out there and just kind of put a stop to all of this. And um, that's what I'm here for, to give you all information so you can go use it. So that'll do it for me here. Again, thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, everybody, for your support. You know, we love everybody's comments, everybody's support. You know, drop your comments. What do you think about this situation? You know, let's have some fun. Just drop some comments. Let's have some fun. I'll be responding to y'all. And um, yeah, tell me some of the stuff y'all are hearing too, because it's uh, it's getting wild out there. Um, I'll probably be posting a video tomorrow, basically kind of going over potentially the UCLA rumors, Tony White, et cetera, and maybe put some uh, put some context in that as well. So Yep. Again, thanks everybody for tuning in and I will see y'all tomorrow in the next video. Peace.